the thing that is the core is our black womanness, and we, we share that. So I think that's the, that's the beauty of it all. There, there is diversity within black female geekdom that yes. I think isn't necessarily recognized. It's not a, you know, a one singular experience. It's many, many experiences. Well, and I think that that also ties into the whole, you know, Trek versus Wars, various, you know, things. I think it depends on what what fandom you come into the geekdom through, right? X Men comic books weren't uncool when I was a kid, where I was a kid, right? Um, it was Star Trek actually wasn't super cool except for Michelle Nichols. You know, think of it, like she was she was like the passable thing, her and Spock. <laughs> but every time they greased up Kirk's chest, we were all like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. But I grew up with, you know, Hitchcock and Who and all of these things. And so for me, I never felt like geek space or nerd space wasn't the space I was supposed to be in. For me, the big shock was probably in 2009, race fail in, in sci-fi fandom. Um, if you if you Google race fail 2009, you'll find me all over. Um, I, I, I might have a reputation for that. Um, <laughs> just a little. A little bit, but that was the thing that, that sincerely set me off because all of a sudden people were telling me that this, this culture I had participated in was writing vampire stories and all of that. I have some really terrible vampire stories from my teen years, we don't discuss those. Uh, they will also never see the light of day. Uh, but I was doing all of that already. So in 2009, to suddenly start this whole, like, well, you know, black women don't do this, black women do this. What fucking black women do you know? Who are you talking about? Where, where, who are you hanging out with? And it was such a surprise to me to find that people thought that we hadn't always been here. Because I, I was immersed in a culture full of folks. You know, you got the comic book shops on the south side. You always got your good comic book shop that lets you come in and work so you can afford comics or lets you clean up to pay off your box or whatever as a kid. So I didn't expect to find out that people thought we weren't there. We had always been there. What we didn't necessarily do for a host of reasons, hello Jim Crow, was go to conventions. Yes. 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 And and since Mickey brought it up, going to co conferences and conventions is a is a privilege thing because it's not cheap. You can't tra always travel, and depending on where the convention is, you may not even want to go there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, if I might get on to our next question, which is about this pushback we've received as Black women nerds in within the verse, even though we, like you said, we have always been here. And that's something I've just recently learned in my experience because growing up in like everything, I didn't realize that black women nerds, yo, we were always here. But I'm beginning to realize that this pushback, unfortunately, was always here too. And I was wondering if any of you had any particularly interesting stories Mickey can't talk first, we'll be here all day. <laughs> so Tanya! <laughs> um, so the main pushback I've gotten, and it's mostly in the gaming sphere, so for those of you on Twitter, if you've seen the hashtag, I need diverse games, that was me. And thanks to Mickey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and um, thanks to Mickey and her many thousands of followers retweeting things, it really took off. It and seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a great idea. it was a great idea. I got the shirt and everything. <laughs> um, but the pushback has been for me as a gamer, like, you know, I still have my um, not Genesis, the other Sega con the other uh, Sega console. Dreamcast. Thank you. I still have my Sega Dreamcast and my PS2 and PS4. And this is a culture I've been in since we still had arcades. Mm -hmm. And I had dudes telling me. You're, a, you're not a gamer, B, you don't belong here, and why don't you go make me a sandwich? I was not amused. <laughs> so I, I've had my fair share of dealing with Gamergate and people who think that I don't belong here because, you know, I'm not a dude or I'm not white or I don't play the right kind of games. Oh my god, the right kind of games. But I, I have Halo and COD in my collection. People can come, come try that if they want to. <laughs> so. Um, but that frustration of not seeing myself equally represented is what led me to use that hashtag. And out of that has come a lot of good things, but there's been a lot of bad things. Like, you know, people telling me that I'm a white trust fund kid to go fuck myself and all those other fun things you get on Twitter when you are a woman and talk. So, yeah, that's been the not-so-fun side of talking about diversity in gaming. 
And I'll be on Mickey's panel tomorrow about trolling and yes. talk about it more. And so will I. So <laughs> well, and, and I'm going to say this. Um, those of you who have been to a lot of my things have seen the dude sitting in the front row a lot. My husband comes to all of my panels. My husband comes to all of my panels because one of the things that has been an outgrowth of me being outspoken and yada yada on the internet about this topic and other topics, I'm not shy, you might have noticed, is that people like to threaten to kill me. People like to threaten to rape me. People like to threaten to do a lot of things to me. And it's one of those things where you can try it at a con if you want to. First of all, I was in the army. I will beat the brakes off you. <laughs> <laughs> That big dude in the front row, he grew up on the low end, so you can right, yeah. <laughs> try it. Let me know how it work out for you. Um, there'll be some slow singing and some flower bringing. But <laughs> sometimes the good comes out, sorry. But no, one of the, the really interesting things has been that people really have tried to geek check, have really tried to be like, well, you don't know this thing, or you haven't done that thing, or whatever, or that you don't play the right games. I don't actually like first person shooters. I get migraines, the motion camera makes me queasy. However, I will kick your ass from here to Christmas playing Killer Instinct. I I was a Tetris girl. I, I played Atari. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I can play or where I can be in this genre that also, frankly, I've been creating in for longer than some of these Muppets coming at us online have been a lot. It's <laughs> my ass. <laughs> Now you know what to expect when you come to a panel with a Mickey Kennedy. I'm not really a nice girl. I've met you. <laughs> Kedra, do you have anything? You know what? Here's the thing. Like, I spent my entire life mostly spending my entire life around black folks. So I haven't really had many experiences with like, you don't belong here. Because it's never happened. Because it's just not, and it, I, it, it, it sounds cool, but like I just I haven't spent enough time in situations <laughs> <laughs> in white geekdom, for lack of a better term, to even have that experience. But I will say this: is that I have a belief that the reason why we are seeing such a pushback within so-called geek culture about who belongs and who doesn't is because within the past ten years so-called geek culture has become more profitable than ever before and therefore now you have gatekeepers deciding who can make money off of this and who can't just like with any other media structure where who gets to profit from culture and who doesn't geek culture wasn't always this way in the past 10 years it has been so now we see the gatekeepers pushing back and saying here's who belongs who gets to profit who gets to make money off of this, who gets to create a career off of this. Even if you were always here, all of a sudden you're not good enough, you don't belong, you have to prove your credentials. This is, an, this is a new thing. This is within the past decade or so. I would even say within the past five years or so. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> is it personal? No, I don't have personally, but what I have observed to me is directly connected to what's going on on a, an economic level with the mainstreaming and the commodification of geek, of geek culture. So, and of course that's always, when you get into commodification of any kind of culture, race, class, gender gets into that. So, and black women tend to be at the bottom. Well, and I think that's definitely one of the things because 2009 is when diversity in sci-fi really blew up, but it, it had always been an issue. And what was starting to happen was that publishers got tired of seeing the same Lord of the Rings knockoffs. There are only so many ways you can write the fucking book. Please stop. Let it go. Let it go. Your epic journey, the dwarves, warros, whatever, hobbits, please stop. We're begging you, right? And suddenly, the books that were doing better were books with women, with women of color, with, with trans people, all of these things. These books were starting to creep in. And I think what happened is that people looked up and they were like, shit, there was money to be made. There's a whole audience over there. What do you mean they don't want a book written by a white guy, about white guys? They want a book written by brown people, about brown people. They want disabled people. Wait, hold on. No, that's my money. No, it's not. I didn't take your shot at whatever. None of these creators are taking your shot. What they're doing is getting their shot. Now you have to go make a road to yours, but nobody wants to hear that. Carlin, do you have anything to add? I have nothing to add. <laughs> related but I think it's connected because like it drives me crazy 
people are incredulous about the success of the Fast and the Furious movies. I keep reading that over and over again. How can it be this movie that mostly people of color could make this much money? Oh, we just have no clue. Why don't they want to watch the Avengers? Blah, 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 blah. It drives me insane. You another panel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm putting that on the idea. They're throwing, they're throwing cars. Everyone wants to watch right. the throw cars. But the idea that they're like, oh, there's, it's mostly people of color. Why? Oh, diversity somehow makes money. We just don't know. How did this happen? Empire. <laughs> Oh, 